Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I thought, why not do a ship? Actually, I thought it a while ago because I built this in, like, July? Anyway, this is the Trumpeter SS John W. Brown, which is a very exciting name. Okay, that's a lie. This is a Liberty ship, and I believe one that still survives to this day, which I think is pretty interesting and cool, but I'm not here to waffle on about that. This is a 700th scale plastic model. I don't often build ships, so I hope this is something the ship folks out there enjoy. As you can probably tell, I forgot to video the box on the spinny boy, but there's nothing on the back anyway. Inside the box we find a hull. Two hull parts actually, upper and lower. This is obviously so that you can build the model with the full hull, or a waterline hull. And there's a bottom plate if you do want to build a waterline hull. So I guess there's really three hull parts. I guess this is also handy if you want to simplify painting the ship. Just paint the upper and lower hull sections separately and then glue them together. Here's that bottom plate for the waterline build. Exciting, I know. And here's the deck part. It looks quite deckish. I would say it has all the things we need for a Liberty ship, but it doesn't. We have to add those. That's kind of the fun part. We find those parts on the various sprues included with the kit. Thanks, Captain Obvious! You're welcome. The parts in this kit are pretty neat, and don't have too much in the way of mold lines. Mold lines are there, because they're always there, but they're not horrendous. They're not even really that bad. It shouldn't take too much time or effort to clean the parts up and get them ready to be glued together. There are some fairly small and, more importantly, thin and easily broken parts, so that might take a little bit more time to clean up because you've got to be careful, which is fair enough, and I would say it's worth the effort. I'm not much of a ship guy, I mean, I almost never build them, so I can't tell you how inaccurate or not this kit is. And I'm sure there's some simplification compared to the real thing. It's in 700th scale after all, so you can't expect every tiny bolt to be there. Still, the parts look right to me, and it builds up into something I can easily identify as a Liberty ship, so that's cool. The kit includes a small decal sheet, which doesn't really have a lot in the way of markings, but you don't really need many. You get the ship's name, John W. Brown, some flags and I don't know what decal number 5 is, is it a misprint of some kind? I've no idea. The instruction booklet is pretty simple. There's some sprue guides at the front, and if you think you're missing a part, you can check here. The diagrams are pretty well laid out and easy to understand and follow. In some areas there are quite a few things to do in a single step, which I find can lead to things being missed or forgotten, but that's really more of a me problem. I guess the way to deal with that is to pay attention to the instructions and double check after each step. I'm sure you'll be fine. There's also a painting and marking guide, which is of course quite basic, but it's a good starting point if you're trying to figure out what colours you want to use. You don't have to use these colours, but they might give you some ideas. That's everything that's in the box, so let's start gluing some bits of plastic together. Heck yeah! Actually, before we can do that, some holes need to be drilled. This isn't too difficult, and if you're not sure where I've drilled, check the instructions. Obviously using the instructions is a better idea than trying to follow what I'm doing anyway. Once the holes are drilled, I clean them up and slightly widen them with my knife a bit. Don't make them too big though, otherwise the parts will fall right through the deck and nobody wants that. And now we can glue the bits of plastic together. I start by gluing the deck to the upper hull, which makes more sense than gluing it to the lower hull, I guess. This is pretty simple in theory, and not that hard in practice either. I glued it down in sections to make it a bit easier, and to reduce the risk of making a mess. I do my best to eliminate the gap along the side of the hull. It hasn't turned out totally perfect, but I think I did an okay job. Any gaps along here could easily be filled in with putty later on. Now I add the first of several thousand of these ventilator things. They probably have a more fancy name, but obviously I don't know what it is. There's a whole bunch of these in various sizes, so refer to the instructions to make sure that you are using the correct part. This pair go on the front of the ship and face rearward. There's another two that go on the rear and also face rearward. I guess that's a good way to keep the seawater out. None of these are especially difficult to place, though they'll likely need a bit of nudging so they're nice and straight and neat looking. Next there's two of these brackety things, and an anchor is glued to both of them. 
There's no guide for this, so you're going to have to eyeball it, but it's not that tricky. Then I glue them in place on the deck, the first one toward the rear like so. The other one goes around the middle, slightly toward the front. These seem like odd places for anchors to me, but maybe they're in storage. I did end up removing the middle one, but for now it's here. And now, more ventilators. These are significantly smaller than the first set, and tweezers were rather helpful here. Again, there are two at the front, though I have installed them wrong. When I was putting the rear pair on, I noticed that one of them at each end faced sideways. Fortunately, the glue wasn't totally set, so I was able to make modifications. Next, I add these two angled, boxy things. I'm assuming that these are the tops of stairways down into the lower decks. Either that, or they're just for decoration. Again, not a shipsman. You're just going to have to deal with it. I assemble some little firing platform things next. These consist of a little pole and the firing platform itself, and they're simple enough to put together. Just make sure that they're as neat and straight as you can make them. You need to make four of these, and I figure setting them aside for a moment to bond is a good idea. That way they'll stay nice and straight when I try to install them. In the meantime, I add some anchors. Different anchors to before, and there's a fairly obvious place that these should go. Installing them was a little bit fiddly, and I had to do a bunch of nudging to get them into what looks to me like an appropriate position for raised anchors. And then, why not install those firing platforms? I don't know if that's really the appropriate term, but that's pretty much what they are. So, that's what I'm calling them. As I assume I said before, there are four of these, and they're quite easy to position. I try to get them into place as nice and neatly as I can. Shouldn't you be doing that for all of the parts? Well, yeah, I am. Sometimes I just like to state the obvious. And now, some more air doodads. Two go here, in front of the outline for some of the superstructure. These are both different. Again, pay attention to the instructions to be sure which parts to use here. There's another one on the other side of the ship here, and all of these vents should be facing forward. Let's start adding some armaments. A sensible place for guns is the firing platforms. I have no idea what kind of guns these are, but they're very small, and I can imagine they would be very easy to break. I don't want to break them, so I'm being careful with them. Tweezers are definitely recommended for this kind of thing. You probably won't be surprised to learn that there are four of these guns, one for each platform. It's not too tricky to get these into place, and you could face these guns in any direction you want, but outward, away from the ship, is probably the most sensible. Next, more of these, whatever they are. These mount on the, I had assumed these were cargo hatch covers, but as is becoming more and more obvious, I don't know about ships, and the instructions say these parts go here, and it would just be rude not to follow the instructions, wouldn't it? These parts go on quite easily, whatever they are. And then it's time to assemble some of the superstructure. This tiny little building. I'm guessing it's a crane machinery room or some such. Anyway, the two wall parts go together, and I use the work surface to help make sure things line up nice and straight. Then, the two crane boom parts go on. They really don't seem to want to just sit in place, and they're prone to flopping over, which makes this a bit fiddly. Putting the roof part on helps deal with this a little bit, but you'll still need to do some nudging to make sure they're on where they should be. They don't have to be perfect, but they should be somewhat close to how the instructions show. Makes sense, right? Ventilators come next, because of course there are more ventilators. They go into the two outer mounting holes like so, and they both face inward. A mast is then added to the middle mounting hole. Obviously this should be very straight and vertical, so some nudging will probably be needed to ensure that. There will be more similar structures later, but for now, it's time to put together the rear firing platform and some kind of room. The instructions say to put together the three wall parts for this first, and then attach the roof, but it makes more sense to me to use the roof and glue the wall parts to that. That makes it a lot easier to get things lined up properly. It is still a bit fiddly, but not too difficult. I think it would be more frustrating to do it the other way. Once that's together, I glue another pair of firing platforms on top of that. The instructions, again, would have us do things in a more fiddly way by installing the guns on this assembly now. Instead, I glue it onto the hull. The main reason for this is so that I can apply pressure to minimise any gaps between the walls and the deck, without also pressing down on the small and easily broken gun parts. Now, why not add those gun parts? 
I start with the ship's biggest gun, or rather the mounting for it. This goes on pretty easily, align it so it'll be pointing wherever you want it, and then glue the gun into place. This is probably the least easily damaged gun in this kit, but it is still pretty small, so be careful with it. This seems to be the main gun and you don't want that to be broken, do you? Another two guns are mounted in the two upper gun platforms, and these are installed much like the smaller guns from earlier. It's pretty easy if you're careful. I decided to aim these in the same direction as the big gun. Maybe there is, or was, an enemy out there. This is kind of visual storytelling, I guess. Next, a mast. I had to do some drilling to get this to fit, which probably would have been better done before adding the guns and such, but I only thought ahead a little bit. Oh well. I try to line this up as straight and neat as I can, because nobody wants a wobbly mast. Then I make more of these craney, superstructure bits. These go together quite similar to the first one, but they have different crane parts, with booms on both sides of the structure. They're a little bit more fiddly to get into place, but they're not too bad. Again, there are ventilators on the roofs, and a mast in the middle. We need to make two of these structures, and the masts are different for both. Obviously refer to the instructions to be sure you're using the correct parts for these. I put those assemblies aside for now, because those cranes will definitely get in the way and broken if I try to add other details to the ship with them installed. And that is certainly not ideal. Time to build the main chunk of superstructure. I start with the fun sport of drilling. That's not a sport! Quiet you. Then, walls. Again, the instructions say to put all four walls together, but again I feel like it's a better idea to glue them to the roof part, or upper deck if that's what you would prefer to call it, because it makes it quicker and easier to get everything aligned properly. I use the desk to make sure the bottom of this assembly is relatively square, so that it won't have too many gaps when I glue it to the deck. We don't need to worry about that for a while, because there's still a bunch of stuff to add. Some walls go on top of that assembly, and this wall has an opening, and onto the back of it we glue this little inner box part which represents the inner part of the ship. This is more convincing than just having an opening, I think. Again rebelling against the instructions, which are telling me to glue the walls together independently, I glue them on top of the structure that I just put together. As long as you get the right parts in the right places, which is pretty straightforward, putting this together isn't too hard. You will have to do some nudging and a little bit of pressure applicating, but you would expect to do that with this sort of thing anyway. I install the roof part next, and I don't want to leave the walls for too long before doing this. More nudging and pressure is going to be needed of course, and if the wall parts are a little bit movable and not completely bonded together, that can be helpful. And there we have the main superstructure thing. It's not finished yet, clearly, as you can see from all of the holes in it. Obviously some of those holes are windows, or portholes, but a lot of them are mounting holes for more bits. Before I add those though, I build this little room thing. It's got walls and a roof bit, and they all go together pretty easily, though there is a bit of gappage around the corners. For that I bring in our good friend Pressure, and things end up looking okay. I then glue this vent to a wall, the one with the little notch in the bottom for it to mount into, obviously. And then I move on to assembling these little, like, guess they're walkways that come out from the bridge. There are two of these, and both of them have two legs that mount into these little holes in the bottom of them. I try to get these legs as straight as I can, and then I set them aside because I want to add the gun platform things. This assembly has four gun platforms, but only two of them are moulded in place, so we obviously have to glue the other two on. Next, some stairs. These lead up to whatever this opening is. They go into place with a moderate amount of fiddling, and once again, tweezers are proving to be quite a strong ally here. I then attach the bridge walkway things, whatever they're called. The first one, on the right side, or I guess starboard is a bit more appropriate. The first one is a little bit messy, but it's not too bad. The other one was a bit more annoying to install, and ended up looking a bit worse. I didn't film that one, but I'm sure you'll be able to spot it as the video goes on. Once that's done, I install that assembly, and it's pretty obvious where it should go. There's a raised guide for it, making it very easy. I make sure the glue guard is appeased by using a good amount of glue, and also pressure, to try and minimise any gaps that might want to appear. Not today, gaps. Not today, I say as I apply a fair bit of pressure. I think you will agree with me when I say that it's best to put this in place now, rather than later, when it's covered in fragile guns and such. 
guns and ventilator things of which a bunch go into place now. There's two here at the edge of this deck, one of which faces outward. There are four more vents around where the exhaust stack will go. All of these face forward. I imagine that it's easier to install these now before putting the stack in place. This vent goes here and it seems to obstruct the big opening in the wall. Maybe that's not a problem. The instructions want it here, so why not put it there? Next comes this thing, which I'm assuming is some kind of antenna. It's a pole with a little loop at the top, so I don't know what else it could be. It's not looking too bad so far. I mean, it does look a bit nicer if you look at it from a distance, but there's still a lot more to add. Like the little craney things for the lifeboats. There are four of these for each side of the ship, and they're not too hard to put into place. The guide pins help here quite a bit, but there is still a lot of side to side play, so I had to do quite a bit of nudging to get them to sit vertically. They're not perfect, but they could be worse. Instead of adding the lifeboats, I add this little roof looking thing. It needed a bit of pressure, but it goes on pretty easily. It's obviously got mounting holes in it for more ventilation, but before I add those parts, I glue together the stack. This is two parts and it goes together easily enough, and the keying helps but you'll have to nudge it so that it lines up nice and neatly. I set that aside and add ventilators to the little roof thing. The perils of tweezers holding onto small rounded parts is that they might go flying, and one of these parts did that. It pretty much just vanished, so there's a missing part here. I decided to just deal with it, and hopefully it's not too noticeable on the finished model. I guess the moral of the story is be careful. Two more ventilators go into place here, both of them facing rearward. Are you sick of seeing me install these things yet? No! Okay. Next comes an angled, and I'm assuming here, stairway thing. I guess there has to be at least one way to get up onto this deck, and this is easy enough to install. Then, could it be another ventilator? Heck yeah. Next I add this, I don't know what it is, maybe it's an exhaust vent of some sort, or maybe just a nice bit of wall for the captain to lean on. Who knows? Somebody. After that, guns are mounted into the gun mounts. Oh really? Yep, really. Like with the other small guns, tweezers are quite helpful. I install the stack next, and there's plenty of clearance around those vents, so this isn't too hard. That little tab thing on the stack should be facing towards the rear. I'm not sure what it is, but that's how it goes. That should deal with those exhaust gases quite nicely. I follow that with this little room that we built a few minutes ago. Probably a bit too much glue there, but sometimes that's just what the glue god wills. The structure is easy enough to position. Then I add the lifeboats. There are four of these, two on each side, and they're very easy to position. I did mess up on two of them when cutting them off the sprue, and there's a little bit of damage, but maybe we can just claim that's battle damage. That's your excuse for everything! Get mad and stay mad. Now it's time to put together the forward gun platform thing, I guess would be a way to describe this. These two parts go together like so, and then this little box can go on the top here. I have no idea what it is, but it goes here. The instructions told me, that's how I know. Across from that, I install what appears to be a little winch. A bit of gentle nudging to get those parts nice and straight, and that assembly is ready to be glued onto the deck. It goes here at the front like so. A little pressure to get it properly into place is needed, and at this point that shouldn't be a surprise. Pressure is our friend. I then add the gun. It's a little bit bigger than the two just behind it, and a bit smaller than the one on the rear. I have no idea of the calibre of any of these guns, and again I'm not really a ship guy. Also not really much of a gun guy, and I'm just not that interested to look it up. I'm sure somebody will tell me what they are in the comments anyway and then I'll probably forget. Anyway, next I assemble another tiny little room thing. This is about as simple as it looks. Line the parts up, apply pressure to minimise gaps, and then glue the extra details on. In this case those details are life rafts, or at least I'm assuming they're life rafts. The bottom one has keying which helps it line up neatly on the roof, but the subsequent ones don't have any keying so you've got to line them up as neatly as you can. Mine have ended up looking pretty neat but they're obviously not perfect. Then onto the wall I glue this piece of bracing, I have no idea what it's for, maybe it's another one of those anchor holding things. 
Next, more drilling, but only because I missed a couple of holes in the very first step. I guess it pays to pay attention. This isn't a huge problem, mostly because I haven't glued the whole bottom on. I then try to mount the little superstructure part with the life rafts on top. However, that anchor thing is in the way. I couldn't actually see the anchor anywhere in the instructions other than when it was installed, so I figured there was no harm in just removing it. And now it's time to install all of those craney things that we built and set aside. I start with this one that has two crane booms because, well, I just wanted to make sure that it would go into place and not be interfered with by that little life raft room thing, which is what I install next. It seemed to go into place fairly easily, though I did need to apply a fair bit of pressure. I then add the forward craney thing, which, as you know, is the technical term. This goes into place quite easily, which is good, because this would be kind of tricky to apply more than a little bit of pressure to. Behind that, I install a second mast, which is simple enough. Just add glue where it contacts the other mast and boop it into place. Boop. I think that thing that looks like a mounting hole at the top of the mast there is meant to be a crow's nest or something like that. It's not actually a thing where something should be attached. I did check the instructions just to be sure though. I then install the rear crane thing, and unsurprisingly, this one goes on much like the other one, including a mast part that gets booped into place. Nice and easy. This makes the whole thing look much more complete, and I guess if you're building this as a waterline model, it almost is. It's not though. We've got to add these things which are, I think, mounts for some bigger life rafts. It's easy enough to glue these on, and then glue the life raft things into place on top of them. The problem I had here is that I lost one of the mounting things. I did spend some time trying to find it, but it seems to have just vanished, which, as you can imagine, is rather annoying. The way I dealt with it was to simply omit two of the things, which I'm sure is going to enrage some ship nerds, but whatever, deal with it. I've got two of the four in place and maybe we can devise some kind of story that some no good punk kids really wanted those two raft thingies and stole them, and nobody noticed before setting sail. Yeah, that'll work. Surely the sailors on that ship were that careless, yeah. Anyway, because I'm not building a waterline ship, I need to add the propeller to the lower hull, and this is about as easy as it looks, which is to say it's not at all difficult. And then the rudder. This is a bit of an issue if you want to keep the lower hull separate for painting like I do. It should make contact with both the upper and lower hull parts. I positioned it as best I could using the lower hull part as a guide, but not adding any glue where those two parts come into contact. And there we have it. The Trumpeter 700th scale Liberty ship, SS John W. Brown, is pretty much complete. I mean, it is missing a couple of parts, and I'm sure that would be devastating to some, but I can deal with that. I think Liberty ships are a pretty interesting subject. Sure, they're not these super wartime heroes, and they're not really all that much to look at, but they were quite important to the war effort and an impressive feat of industry, I guess is a good way to put it. I think this model is a pretty decent representation of a Liberty ship, but as I've said a few times through this video, I'm not a shipsman. If you think I don't know much about tanks, just wait until you find out how much I don't know about ships. That just means I can't tell you how accurately this represents a Liberty ship, or specifically the John W. Brown, but I do think it's a pretty good representation, and that's what I'm after with a kit like this. I had a good time putting this model together, well, for the most part. I was a little bit annoyed at losing that one ventilator, and even more annoyed at losing that raft holder thingy. But I figure, why let what is really a minor loss of some tiny bits of plastic ruin my day? It would probably be possible to scratch build some replacement parts, but if I'm honest, I just didn't care enough to do that. Even if it means I get angry comments on the internet. Oh no. Anyway, it was a fun build. Some of the smaller bits were admittedly a little bit frustrating because of how tiny they were, but I kind of assumed that would be the case going into this, and it doesn't really take away from my enjoyment. It wasn't the most difficult kit I've put together, not by a long shot, but I don't think it would really be suitable for a beginner, mostly because of the previously mentioned high number of fiddly bits. I would opt for something a bit more simple for a first kit, but if you've got a couple of models under your belt, this shouldn't be too much of a challenge. It did take a fair while for me to get this built, and as usual I did so on stream, so that's always going to add to construction time. I've forgotten how many streams it took, a few, but you could probably get this built in a couple of afternoons, depending on how quickly you wanted it done. 
The ship does come with a little nameplate thing, but I totally forgot to show that here. You can see it in the what's in the box section of the video anyway. So, I think this is a pretty neat little kit. It's going to look a lot better when it's painted, obviously, and I don't think that's going to be too difficult a job, despite it looking quite fiddly with all of those booms and masts everywhere. I mean, it's mostly grey, so how hard could that be? Maybe I've jinxed myself by saying that. At any rate, I don't plan on actually painting this anytime soon, so don't go holding your breath for it. My two paint list is already long enough. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comment section below. If you've built one of these, or any other cool models and you want to share, why not drop by our friendly Discord community and show us some pictures? We'd love to see what you've done. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live, head on over to my Twitch channel and give me a follow. The link to that, along with all of my other stuff, like social media, is in the description below. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, consider becoming a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch next time I'm live. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.